Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Automation with Inventor, which is going to see us going and looking at how our logic can be used in Inventor to speed up daily tasks. My name is Jonathan Kruger, and I'm an application engineer for, from Moderna Design Centers, and my primary focus is on the manufacturing sector. I specialize primary, primarily on Fusion, Inventor, Vault, and Plant 3D. With that out of the way, I'd like to go straight into the software and start the demonstration. We will have a Q&A at the end if there are any questions that might come up. And any questions that you do raise, Yashin and Helen from OneSolve will also be able to just have a look at. All right, so let me switch to Inventor. Okay, so when I think of automation with Inventor, the first thing that I think of is our logic, which is something that you don't have to be a programmer to learn. And there are obviously courses specific on how our logic is used. But for anyone who hasn't seen what our logic looks like, it's basically, I would say, like a dumbed down version of programming within the program, which can be used to automate tasks. So for this model that I have here, I've got a blind, and it was something that took about two hours to put together. It was a quick presentation we did for a customer. I do have more advanced models, but these were ones I created specifically for customers. And with that being their IP, I'm not allowed to uh, basically show any of those off. But if we look at this simple example, if I just change the height to three meters and press enter, you'll see the model will obviously update. If I change the width, width to two meters, it updates. Our uh, connected parameters to this. So as you can see, I can just demonstrate the blinds opening and closing. If I say, for example, change the window frame thickness, I can set it to 100. And you'll see that as these changes are happening, all the little parts are, are updating. And it's, it's updating intelligently based on this R logic. Um, I can even do things like if I switch off the middle section, now it's just a single set of blinds. Maybe I wanted to change my height to 1,500. And there you go. Okay, so that's essentially what our logic can do. And there are obviously a lot more advanced applications that you can use this with. But I want to first of all show you something that everyone should be able to apply in their work environment right now. So I'm just gonna create a standard part. And in this scenario, I have a lot of customers who, when they create their assemblies, they have the bill of materials and in the bill of materials, you have a description and the part number, which they would like control of. And what we can do with our logic is make filling in that, that our property easier to remember and also easier to actually do. So what I'm wanting to control is essentially the part number here, which is, created automatically when you save the file and your description. So if I save this file now, and I'm just gonna call it part number, you'll see that the field there will be part number. So it automatically pulls through whatever you save the file as. Okay, so I'm gonna to switch to our logic and I'm gonna to go to forms and add a form. So this is the simplest version of, of how you can use our logic to like basically in your everyday use case. So this on the right represents the form that it's going to create. And on the left, we have which different options you have. So I want to control the part number and the description. And as you can see, it's literally just dragging and dropping. You can create tabs. So I also could have a picture in here. Say for example, I'm just going to put the picture at the top and I'm going to select the image and set it to an image from my desktop. So as you can see, the word part number filled in, that's from when I saved the file and description being empty. So I'm just going to click on OK. Um, I also want to rename this to, just going to call it RProp. That's the name of this form. So that's going to be a little bit more important. So that's something anyone here can do. And essentially what I can do is then incorporate a trigger into this part. So if I go to invent triggers, I can say that Sorry, I first need to write a rule. So I'm going to add a rule and this rule is going to show that dialog box. So I want it to show form and the form name is rprop. 
So you'll see when I run the rule, the dialog box basically pops up. So if I right click and say run rule, it shows up. Then I'm going to go to my event triggers and say, right, whenever I open the document, I want the rule to run. And whenever I create a new document from it, I want it to run. So essentially if I save this file, I close it and I open it again, that rule will run because I've opened the document and then I could fill this in. But that means every time I open the file, that's going to pop up. So it doesn't really make sense. So I'm gonna edit this rule a little bit. So the rules you can get basically as complicated or as simple as you like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an if then end if. And my expression is a criteria. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if the part number is equal to, and then I'm just gonna put two quotes, which means no value. So if the R property for this part has a part number value of nothing, then I want, and I'm just gonna cut and paste that R logic rule there, I want that form to be shown. So if I had to save, save and run this rule, nothing will happen because I did actually fill in the part number. So because of that, it doesn't pop up. But remember, I also did another one. So I'm just gonna copy this rule, paste it below, and change the part number to description. So just going to highlight that, get rid of it, double click on description, which is going to add the description field in its place. So now I'm saying if the part number is nothing, show the form in that rule. If the description is nothing, then show the form. Now I didn't fill in the description. So when I run this rule, I should be faced with this box. So now it's not gonna just show me the form the whole time. It's only gonna show me the form if I, fill, if I don't fill in these values. So if you have this in your assemblies, please, if you are going to go this route, you have to make sure that you fill in these values. I've had people had issues where they have a hundred parts and people are ignoring that box. And then when they open the assembly, there's like a hundred boxes popping up. So just bear that in mind. This is a way of trying to enforce people to fill in those fields. Okay, so once I've done that, all I need to do is save this as a template. So I'm gonna say save copy as, and I'm gonna just call it our logic uh, part. And if I had to close this file, I'm gonna save the changes and create a new file using that template file. Because I said any new document, this field pops up. And if I fill in a description, so done, you'll see if I go to the R properties here, which is what I'm avoiding. I'm avoiding having to go all the way here to fill that in. Okay, so that's just a quick little thing that anyone who's watching this can go back and basically implement if you do fill in the description. And this can be applied to anything here, even custom. You can create custom fields using that. All right. So the next part I wanted to look at was how our logic can basically be a little bit more advanced with your part. So that's obviously very basic. So I've already got a part which I've pre-drawn and what I want to do is I want to use our logic to figure out how many holes I would pattern in this uh, rod and get the program to adjust that pattern, but also get the program to switch the hole off if the, the hole is bigger than basically this um, plate. So to do that, I'm gonna just go to our logic and I'm gonna add a rule. Um, I might want to first create my pattern, so let me do that. So I'm gonna do a rectangular pattern of the hole and the direction is going to be X. I'm gonna just over here say a number of holes equals, and I'm just gonna put 10. So I'm gonna just put a fictitious number in. That's not gonna be the value. I already created a pitch parameter. Okay, so as you can see, there are some of these. So I've already created a pitch parameter and there you can see the 10 holes. So now I need to get the program to figure out how many holes do I need. So I'm gonna switch over here to our logic, add a rule. The rule's going to be control size. And inside of here, 
I don't need to do any if statements in the beginning because all I'm going to get the program to do is to control the parameters. So I'm going to go to model parameters. As you can see, there's the holes. So I'm going to basically double click on the parameter which pulls that value down. And I'm going to say you are equal to the width divided by the pitch minus one. And because I want the minus one to be taken at the end, I'm just going to put this in brackets. So if I save and run, I'm just going to add update rule. So if I save and run that, you'll see that it now has figured out the holes. And if I had to say, for example, go to my FX parameters and set the width to longer, the program automatically puts more holes. So you'll see there, there's 74 holes. If I drop this to 50, there's two holes. So you'll see the program just rounds up. So 1.5 would then equate to two. And I could even use my R logic to round that down. So it does have round up and round down and decimal places. There's a lot of fancy things that you can do with it. So let's uh, set that back to 1.5 meters. And, and what I want to look at next is I want to create a rule which is going to basically switch off the hole if the hole's going to get too big or the plate gets too thin to cut that hole through. So that's where your logic part of our logic basically comes in. So let's go edit this rule. Um, I'm just going to add a if then end of. So if my expression, so I'm going to say if and I'm just going to go for my user parameters. So if the hole, so the circle, and you'll see there's operators that I can use. So if the circle is greater than or equal to the heart, then I'm going to capture that. Don't need to control its sizes because that's going to be counterproductive. Oops. Extrusion true is false. Okay. And I'm going to do the same for this one. You'll see that you can um, copy names. You see if I double click on it, it pulls it down. So you can use, like once you've done this enough, you sort of start to see all the patterns and where things go. I would also normally rename my extrusions and patterns and stuff. So that makes a bit more sense when you look here. So and yeah, you can even do things like add little notes. You put a little asterisk there. You can say um, below will switch off whole pattern. And because I have something switching this off, I need to also create a criteria which will switch it on. And, and what you can do is you can say, instead of just ending it, I can say else, and then add the trues. So in other words, if the top criteria is met, switch it off, otherwise it's on. Save and run. And so long as I've done this the correct way, it won't basically disconnect. So I'm going to go to my FX parameters, go to my heart, I'm going to drop this to eight. And you'll see that the second I drop it to eight, if you look at my, my extrusion two and my rectangular pattern, both those features get basically suppressed. So that's where the logic comes on. And if I change my heart, I'm going to put it at 35. You'll see those holes come back on. So you might have basically the need to do something like that. And if I just look at that form creation, which like I said, that's the simplest form of using our logic, I could easily build a nice user interface for controlling this. I'm just gonna drag my pitch across my circle. Um, you can have little prompts. So you see if I click on width, I'm just going to go here to tooltip. I'm going to say, please input the width of the part. And you'll see what happens is you can actually preview these 
basically a live as you're creating these things you can go on and select different things so with that done if i click done okay click on live form and as you can see it's easy as just going here and saying 800 i could set my height to 20 set my pitch so if you do something i've got a customer who builds um dv boxes and then those dv boxes we basically built a dv box creator and on those things they make them out of an angle um, channel with holes in it and he wanted to automate that so that you just start with that straight shell and you just set the height width length how many internal sections and basically it's done so the last part i wanted to show you with this part is how this part can then get used in your smd so i'm going to save this part um i might also want to control the part number of this part so i'm actually going to just edit this rule and i'm going to add an extra little bit of code here so i'm just going to go part number is equal to and yeah, you can basically just write. So here I'm just going to say um, plate with holes and and what you can actually do is you can actually pull parameters. So I'm going to pull the width insert. I'm going to add an and. second and I'm going to add the heart and with this you've just got to be careful to not have too many gaps and so forth so and the worst that I can do is just save and run it and just see what it does as you can see there's there's some I've obviously left a quote or too many quotes so this quote here is basically ending there and ah, okay so I forgot to put a hand over here. So let's save and run. There we go. Just going to go to the art properties. And you'll see there. So if I look at this, I think, okay, well, I should have actually put a gap inside of this. So I'm just going to go back. Sorry for that bing there. Let's just edit the rule. I might also say oh, I don't like that it wasn't capital holes. Save and run. And if I go back to my, my properties, you'll see that that part's part number is going to be plate with holes 800 millimeter by 20 millimeter. And like I said, it's, it's literally, you can use formulas, you can do anything that you like. So I'm gonna save this part. Okay, it's called our logic with size control. I'm gonna create a new assembly. So some people, what they would do is they would literally just place like open up that part save it as a new one and place it in but you can also use so that part is a generic part if i just say place and i choose that part i can put it in the problem with this is i don't have much control these are all the same parts if i open up one of these parts i go to fx parameters set its width to 1000 they're all going to be 1000 so when i switch back to my assembly these are all one meter so if i want a little bit more control of these things you can place our logic components and what this is going to do is this is useful on okay you do have to save the cmd so i'm just going to call it cmd cmd test i'm going to place our logic component i'm going to select that part and it does mess your screen up. This seems to have gotten better over the years. It used to turn the box into a very small window, but essentially you can then customize this. So I can say, right, I want it to be 800. I want this to be 30. Um, pitch, let's put the pitch at 50. So I call it five. And as, as you can see, as I'm typing this, it's changing. So I'm just gonna press okay put a couple of these down and you could put a couple of them down press escape do the same place our logic component again choose your that wrong one sorry that would be placing itself in itself that might get the program slightly confused 
that's our logic component. So you always want to make sure you choose the original and you'll see what it does is it's going to call it this, the part name 01 and the next one's going to be 02 and the next one's going to be 03. But it gives you unlimited variations of this part. You can place those two in. So I always like to think our parts when it's static size and our logic when it's everything else. So it's very powerful and you'll see if I save this assembly and go to the bill of materials, because of the code, the program is basically formatting the part number of these automatically. So the only thing you guys didn't see me build was the square extrusion, but everything else, the how it's filling in, all of that is created automatically. So you can basically place these parts over and over and just keep customizing. Um, the only time there can be some issues, so let's give it a scenario where this is higher than the heart. So the heart is 20, so I'm gonna make the diameter of the circle 25. So as you can see, the hole's off. And, and I might want to control my R logic a little bit different. Like I created it here. I'll just go back into my code. So inside of here, I could incorporate this into my little programming here. So if I copy this, I'm going to paste it into this one. I'm going to copy this, paste it here. Which now means if this criteria is met, its part number is actually plate without holes and it's switching off those two features. And when it does have holes, it's gonna have it. And Invents is pretty clever. If you have um, several parts, even if they are different physical parts, if their part numbers are identical, then by default, Inventor will merge them. It's just this, this option's on by default. So if you switch it off, it won't do it. But So if you even configure two that are the same, if their part numbers line up, the program will drop them into one. So as you can see, these won't update because it does create duplicate parts, but the next part that I place, if I choose the new updated file, I'm gonna change the circle to be 50. So instead of changing the heights, I'm making the circle bigger. Put two of these down, go to my bill of materials, and it looks like I might have Ah, sorry. Whatever you do, don't leave the one at the end overriding it. Okay, this will work this time. And as you can see, it's just a matter of trial and error when you build these things. There are times when something will do something strange and then you got to try to figure out what is basically the issue. with that holes. Okay, so I tried to incorporate as much as I could into 30 minutes. Um, are there any questions that anyone has for what I've shown you? You can also incorporate this into, uh, let me just switch this. You can also incorporate your, your R logic. It's, there are functions inside of the drawing environment. There are functions inside of all of these. And you'll actually see if you build your own rules. When, you, when you're adding those rules, you just use your snippets on the left here. So as you can see, for the drawing environment, you're going to use these options for documents. So there's a whole lot of things you can control. I've had people use this to just assign materials. You just click a drop down and choose from their predefined sets of materials and it applies them to the model. Okay, so I'm going to switch. Okay, so any questions from anyone? I don't think there's a course specifically for VBA and Inventor, but there is a R logic 
course uh, where you go through how to program our logics. Yes, there, there definitely is. There is a R logic. It's just called Autodesk Inventor R logic. It's a, I would have to double check, but I want to say a two day course where you learn how to build a part that's customizable. Um, obviously it gets a lot more intricate when you start to incorporate controlling assemblies with R logic, but they do cover those. You can, um, so someone is asking, Emilda is asking, you're curious about automating notes on RDW drawing environment, any comments or ideas on how to do this? I'll be honest and say, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't done too much um, customization when it comes to the drawing environment. Um, it depends on what you want to do. Um, I would probably say, if you've never looked at any of the drawing environment stuff, you might want to start off by looking at sketch symbols. Um, it just depends, like I said, what you want to customize. With the R logic, you more customize like creating base views, controlling their scales, controlling their positions, um, those kind of things. You, you, you need to look into how to create sketch symbols, which are pre-made symbols that you can insert onto a drawing quite easily. So Google, Google or, or speak to Yashin about sketch symbols and inventor. Okay, any, any other questions? Okay, hopefully, Hopefully everyone found, uh, I see there's another one. I'm just trying to see. Uh... Yes, exactly. So if you were doing engineering notes where you're just adding a weld note or something to your drawing 100%, the sketch symbols is the way to go. You, you literally just define a new symbol. Um, if I just use this as an example, you can have text inside of here. Um, they're very easy to use these things. Finish it, you give it a name. So I'm just gonna call it new symbol. And then literally all I need to do is just double click on this on my drawing and, and you can insert this as many times. Um, these are attachment points. If you attach it to a point and pull it away, the program will add an arrow. It's, it's fairly easy to set up and easy to utilize. All right, so if uh, that's it from, from my side, uh, hopefully everyone learned something from this. Um, and like I said, it's something that is not difficult for you to implement those little pieces like assigning material and description to a part or those kind of things. It's those tasks where you every single day you're doing something which takes you five minutes, which is very repetitive. You, you try to think, how can I solve this with our logic? Okay, so thanks for joining us. Uh, hopefully everyone enjoys the public holiday tomorrow. And until we speak again, enjoy, good luck. Thank you. Yes, they're definitely, yes, please, everyone, please make sure you fill in the survey at the end of the webinar. And you definitely, there are lots of videos online about our logic. I always recommend people do the training on our logic if it's something you want to uh, put more effort into or want to actively do it. Um, we've also done creating our logic models as a surface service for customers.
So it just depends on what level. Because obviously it can get more advanced, but for the simpler stuff, definitely watch YouTube. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to be ending this now. Cheers.